Peter, it's really great to have you here. Thank you for agreeing to this interview. Thanks for having me. Well, you know, I was really excited about your, your post. I'm not sure when you made them. It was a kind of running chronicle of uh, Hurricane Sandy. Uh, wh when did you post that, actually? I didn't see a date on this, this, uh, this chronicle. I believe I started uh, November 3rd because the hurricane struck uh, October 29th and 30th. And then it was a few days before the gas stations began to run out of gasoline. Uh, so it was the Friday or Saturday afterwards. A hurricane struck, I believe, on a Tuesday night. So it was the Friday or Saturday afterwards where uh, I uh, began to chronicle the growth of the black market. Yeah, and it seems like one of the most, well, I mean, I've, I've been reading spotty reports in the newspapers, but as you know, the journalists aren't too alert to these things. You know, they they seem to be surprised by the shortages and, and confounded by their explanation. Yeah, I am. Um, it originally started when I went out for my partner and I went out for a ride after the storm to see if we could help anybody out and also look at the damage in our area. We're, we're far enough north that we didn't get any of the real heavy. We, we, we couldn't be flooded. We're far away from the, um, from the rivers and ocean, but uh, we got all of the secondary effects. We've got shortages of food, shortages of water, loss of power, all the secondary effects we enjoyed. So uh, we went out for a ride. And what I noticed first was that there was a booming market roadside for secondhand generators. People either wanting them or who didn't need them were selling them. So we went back home and I started looking at a number of um, the uh, more popular bidding and uh, you know flea, flea market type websites. What I found was there was a lot of that, but there was also um, the very beginnings of solicitations um, for, 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 uh, for gasoline, for gasoline and for diesel initially. And then what happened was over the next day, gasoline uh, uh, stations and um, uh, you know, the fueling stations began running out of gasoline, and that, that it really picked up. And by that time, I was taking notes, and I had downloaded some apps on my computer, on my or rather on my phone, to uh, to track the prices, and I was making notes and uh, following it pretty closely. So what what what, what happens? If, I think maybe at the time people were confused. It was like, well, there's a gas shortage. That means you can't drive, but there's nowhere to drive anywhere. Just stay indoors. No big deal. But uh, people didn't really think about the fact that lots of people have got have have bought generators over the last five years anticipating something like this. Right, right. Um, I mean, the thing I noticed was that uh, when, when, when things really got started, it was, um, it had, it, it was, the worst thing that they could have done was basically to put on the, um, the, uh, uh, the odd and even uh, price rationing. I mean, to be very clear, rationing is inevitable. The ultimate question is, how will rationing be accomplished? Is it going to be by spontaneous organic means, or is it going to be by the hand of the state and coercion and all that? And when that, w w once the uh, the lot was cast for interventionism and central planning in the gasoline market, the black market just absolutely took off. I mean, it was uh, the first day we had, uh, what you know, being a trader, I was able to sort of categorize some of the phenomena that we witnessed into more academic categories. I mean, price discovery, the first day... The price started just over the, the, the pump price um, when the shortage really started was about $4.80 a gallon. And within um, a few hours, the price was maybe $5. And then it shot up with, with all the bids with all the bids coming in, people wanting to buy gasoline. It shot up to maybe $30 um, a gallon. And, and at that price, there were people offering to come in from Georgia, drive yeah. to New Jersey and New York area with gasoline. Yeah. And then there were, there, there were any number of... Um, of uh, competitive bids, and then there were offers, and then there were people who started to actually put in what we would call limit orders. I won't pay above 15, but I want this much. Okay. Or I won't pay, or I won't, I'm not going to drive to New Jersey from Georgia for less than $20. And then some would say, well, you know, I'll sell for $25, but I'll also bring, you know, 50 gallons of, of fresh water or food, those yeah. kinds of things. It was very sophisticated with differentiation among market participants in a very short amount of time. Now, in your, to, to your mind, do you think that, that the, the shooting up of the price as high as it was might have been influenced in part by the anticipation of the coming price controls? Um, I have no doubt about it, no doubt at all, especially when, uh, when there was um, there were any number of news articles that said uh, uh, the last time we did this, this is what happened, and they would show the long fuel line. So absolutely, that was part of it. And I also saw firsthand that the very first day uh, that the uh, that the controls were put in place, people were lining up at, at, at 3.45 in the morning. And anticipating that that the controls were going to be effective. Now, uh, did, the, did the controls actually lower the price of gasoline? No, 
no. What they did was they uh, they they only they only uh, delayed uh, uh, the the access to gas by uh, people who wanted to buy it. What they did was they, they the pump prices were as they were. Uh, I don't think they changed. If they changed at all between when the shortage started and when the controls went into place, it was maybe ten cents. It was really a nickel or ten cents. But what they did was they they prohibited um, uh, all purchases to cash, and they uh, limited the amount that you could buy. I think you could get uh, twenty gallons or something like that. And they also wouldn't let people bring a number of tanks. Some people wanted to show up with their car and have the back of their car full of. Uh, uh, the kind of tanks you would use to fill, say, a lawnmower or something like that. They wouldn't let people do that either. They, well, they restricted the amount and uh, the access in terms of uh, your license plate number and then also the basis on which you could purchase it. What happened to the black markets? What, what I mean, ha after the price controls went in effect, did the right. black, uh, how did the markets change? Everything just sort of go underground? Everybody became a little more skittish? Or, or what was the well, effect? Uh, the, the First thing what happened was um, was the price shot up to maybe thirty or, or uh, thirty five dollars a gallon, and then was pushed back down, and then it hovered in a range in, in northern New Jersey. It hovered in a range of say five to seven dollars a gallon, which is uh, compared to the prevailing pump prices of four eighty. Um, you know, it's not it's not that much different. Uh, but in uh, New York City, in particular, in the really hard struck areas in uh, and hard to get to areas like. Uh, Staten Island and uh, uh, and far far Queens, Rockaways and stuff, and, and, and those areas, the prices hovered at twenty and twenty five dollars a gallon for some time. I mean, it stands to reason there's a lot of demand. It's hard to get there. You know, the market just seems to know these things. Uh, the people associate black markets with uh, sketchy people to selling to other sketchy people. Are you talking? Are you saying that the bourgeoisie was involved here in buying and selling? Imagine that. Yeah. So it was regular people. Regular people was like, well, screw these regular It seemed to be, yeah. I mean, my favorite moment in this whole chronicle was, uh, the, I believe in the morning of the third day, an individual came in and said, I've got 500 gallons of fresh gasoline that I'll sell for one mint condition gold double eagle coin. And I quickly pulled up my, uh, my, my I quickly pulled up my gold market thing, and I said, that's $5.80 a gallon. That's brilliant. I, I, I love that idea. I mean, right there, it shows the sophistication of market participant beyond the... Uh, you know the, the type typically associated with such things. Do you think people are actually I mean, using gold and silver, and what what would be the advantage of that over think, over dollars? Well, I, I think I, I I'm sure that it wasn't prevalent, but I do think that someone saw an opportunity, and um, you know more than a few people have commented that this that, that what we saw in, in the aftermath of Sandy, especially in areas like mine that weren't directly hit by the storm, that are only you know got the secondary after effects, is that. Um, you know, we see how unprepared we are, and I mean, you know, I, you know, I, I have a garden in my backyard where I try and do survival or emergency gardening and just tinkering around with it. And I had all these carrots that I uh, that I planted, and they all went bad in the refrigerator. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it's so. My point, my point is that my point is that um, somebody, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, wanting to trade gasoline for a gold coin, I think, is a sign that they, uh, uh, that uh, this was sort of a dress rehearsal for. Um, Know, what, what some something could be the worst possible case outcome of many of the economic policies now in uh, now in operation. Were you intrigued by the attitude of the government, like the uh, the who's the governor of New Jersey or whatever is was it Christie? Christie? Yeah. Um, because it, it seemed like um, he considered briefly the possibility of just letting the markets work, and then uh, rejected um, it. He, he may have done that. I, I didn't follow it that closely, but what I, the, the thing that intrigued me was that. Um, the, uh, the websites in which – there are three or four of them. I'm a little hesitant to mention which they are, but most people can figure them out. Where a lot of this um, – where a lot of this bidding and offering was taking place uh, for gasoline, um, they early on started to try and cut these people off. They started to delete messages. They began um, posting uh, warnings, don't buy gasoline, don't sell gasoline on this site. And their excuse or their, their reasoning or excuse, depending on how you look at it, was that – it's a combustible material, and you don't know who you could be getting involved with. And, um, but immediately, people began be using codes. They began putting offers up, like you know, um, have uh, you know, you know, have 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 generated a sale. And then when you click on the message, you would say gasoline for sale. You know, yeah, things yeah. like that. And then on top of that, um, you know, when the um, I think it was the Attorney General of New Jersey um, came out a few days later. Um, a few days after this all began, and said that they would they would uh, go after people for what they called, I believe, it was unconscionable uh, pricing. 
you know, I wondered to myself with, 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 with rationing in place and with pump prices at 40, 480 is five to seven dollars, you know, considering the cost of time and effort to get somewhere and, uh, you know, setting aside the fact that these are voluntary transactions, um, you know, is that truly unconscionable? I, it's hard for me to imagine how. And I think I actually made one of my tweets. I, uh, one of the tweets I made, I said something like, I'd be really interested to see where that line is drawn. Um, in any case, it'll be arbitrary, but I'm interested to see the thought process. Yeah, you know, uh, I, even though even though this this lessons of this are seem to be very really obvious, you fully anticipate that in the future they'll repeat exactly the same nonsense, the same controls, everything will Thanks. happen again. Yeah, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. And I'll be there to watch the, uh, hopefully to track uh, uh, the prices at that time too. It's, well, it was extremely edifying. Well, let me ask you this, Peter. Um, is do you who benefits from these kind of uh, controls? I mean, somebody benefits, right? I mean, is it is it pure public relations or or what's going on here? I, I think that's what it is. I think it's I think it's it's I think it's favor mongering. I think it's the the need to demonstrate uh, control. The need to say uh, we can harness this. We can you know, allocate these goods, you know, better than the market, or, or at least allocate them. But they, not only do they not allocate them better than the market, they, they really don't allocate them. All they do is restrict uh, access and ensure, not that the one who wants it the most or needs it the most gets it, but the one who's willing to wake up earliest gets it, which the two aren't, the two aren't, don't necessarily correlate. How, how many of the people involved in buying and selling gasoline during this period were actually prosecuted as a result? I haven't heard of any so far. Wow, because I saw that they had some lists, but there must have been a tiny fraction. Well, the one uh, the one area that I do know that um, the the, um, uh, the attorney general or whatever branch of government was charged with this did go after our service stations who raised their prices. I see. They haven't really. I don't. Th I don't think they've been able to track down anybody who was in the black market. And those transactions and those all that bidding and offering was all anonymous anyway. I mean, um, that's what brings a level of nebulousness to my. To my um, reporting of that whole phenomenon is that some might have absolutely been fake. Uh, some yeah. may have been real. Uh, to the extent they left phone numbers or instant message uh, addresses, I assume that many of them were, were real. And um, I also believe that uh, um, that uh, there were um, probably some, 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 some interesting uh, transactions done in terms of trading, because I know a lot of people had diesel. Yeah. Uh, the, the price for diesel went from thirty-five to four dollars in just a few hours. So I think that the thinking was that diesel would be rare, and it turned out that it was actually quite uh, uh, quite available. And so um, my understanding is that is that any legal action was directed against actual service station owners who raised their prices. Did you say that that uh, part of the legislation was to prohibit cash transactions? No, they only permitted uh, uh, when they, when they set up the um, when they set up the. Uh, the rationing only cash was permitted. Now, what's that about? I suppose it's just to make the I suppose it's just to make the transactions a little more egregious, make it a little tougher to to, to, um, uh -huh. to, to dissuade you know anybody from coming in. So you'd have to get to a cash machine then, which yeah, which you'd, means have, you'd have to come in with cash. Uh, you had to come in with thirty or forty dollars or fifty dollars in cash. Actually, no, I'm remembering now. It wasn't a limit of volume. It was a forty-dollar limit. You could only buy forty dollars worth of gas I in think. cash. Now, whether that was a quarter of your tank, if you have some huge SUV, or uh, if that's uh, your whole tank plus a couple of uh, uh, containers, that was the limit. It was forty dollars. Uh, any uh, evidence of Bitcoin transactions? No, no. But that would be uh, that would have been fascinating. Yeah. I, 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 I had my eyes open for uh, for specifically for precious metals and for also I was wondering about uh, about trades for milk and stuff like that because we're our, our shelves were empty for for, for, for some days um, so I was I was I was looking for you know two gallons of gas for or, or you know, five barter. gallons of gas for two dollars for two gallons of milk that sort of thing yeah actual barter now um, I guess it's a little absurd to talk about but in a free market what would actually happen is I guess you get increased prices of people bringing gas from far away and then the price is settling back down again but but probably overall increased demand right and and sure. the, because of the emergency the generators well, those, those prices direct production when 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 somebody says i want you know 35 dollars for diesel uh, everybody with diesel within 500 miles should say you know i'm gonna head straight there of course there's further break points and such but you know those those prices are are the are the, are the, are the peaceful and the uh, again i use the term organic way to direct production
What about what about water and all the other essentials? It seemed like Walmart and some of the other big boxes were really ready. Um, around here, we have two of those large type uh, big box uh, uh, retailers, and uh, uh, they were ready. Uh, but he, I think even they, even they were caught. The big problem was was, was that um, even if they had a good supply line, the problem was that there were ports that were flooded. And uh, yeah. the first thing was that, was that ships weren't allowed into the ports. And then when they were allowed in, it took a lot longer to, um, to pump out the, um, uh, the loading docks for trucks. Yeah. So there were these delays. And that's uh, – so even if somebody had ordered in anticipation of the storm more, ga- uh, more food or more water or whatever, um, it was tough to get in. Yeah, yeah. A lot well, of it sat in harbor. Well, um, I'm going to write an article about your article and see if I can put it in a little bit of a narrative. And I'm really grateful to you for having gone to the trouble of, of chronicling all this. Uh, you, you looked at it like like a like a true scientist. <laughs> uh, it's, you know, one of the one of the interesting things, that, and, and I, I I was thinking about this the other day, is that you know so much of science is preoccupied with beginnings and ends. Yeah. You know, we've seen deflationary crunches and we've seen hyperinflation and those are more monetary than economic but to watch the birth of a market yeah. and watch all these phenomena kind of occur was was really fascinating and i just uh, i hope the i have the opportunity to do it again and yeah. again it's great thank you for spending time with me today pete thanks okay Take care, bye-bye Jim.